What's up everyone, it's Francis Undead. I know it's been quite a while since last time I up um I upload I uploaded my out speaking test walkthrough uh videos. So um today I just uh I would like to make another one just to um keep myself primed and uh help you focus on your incoming out uh out speaking test try to uh, blow off some steam, ease your nerves, so without further ado, let's begin. Part 1. The examiner asks the candidate about him or herself, his or her home, work or studies, and other, fam uh, other familiar topics. Um, first of all, as you can see here, we have the um, possible questions. The, the examiner might may ask you did you go to secondary high school near to where you lived why or why not what did you like about your secondary or your high school why tell me about anything you didn't like at your school how do you think your school could be improved okay let's um, let me answer the first question did I go to secondary school near to where uh, near near to where I lived? Yes, um, I lived. Um, I, I I once lived in a boarding school, and that's that's um, that's right beside my high school, where I where I um, where I uh, studied my O levels and my A levels. So. Um, Yes, the answer is uh, straight. Yes. So, uh, what did you like about my my high school? It has some nice, nice um, furnitures, very modern furnitures. You know, it the the furnitures are always brand new, always um, upgraded, and they are always um, not not always, but frequently maintained and looked after by by the uh, maintenance tech uh, technicians <laughs> especially the uh, IT hardware the uh, you know the uh, laboratory e uh, laboratory equipment either in chemistry labs physical uh, biology labs as well as the uh, physics labs as you know, yeah, we in, in my high school we we um we have three uh, sorry not 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 three but four types of laboratories. One of them is chemistry lab, the other one is biology lab, followed by physics lab, a, as well as um, IT labs, which is the computer labs. So yeah, that's um that's pretty sophisticated that's uh, that that's the that's the part that's that's one one of the things i i enjoyed i enjoy the most during my high school life and um what uh, what are the things that i dislike about my high school yes um some of the educators, the um, principal, school principal, uh, they kind of, um, they were, they are like always some um, kind, kind, um, kind of on on edge. They are kind of um, easy to get pissed off. <laughs> they usually um get pissed off by some very trivial things such as uh for boys once you forget to um get a haircut you know for 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 a couple of months then 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 you then you could get say 
you um you you could get de um detention you know <laughs> you will be um disciplined <laughs> you know to it, well it's not it's not e it's not exactly a punishment but it's more like you the uh, the uh, principal the school principal or the uh, disciplinary master will for will force you to do some community services such as cleaning the library cleaning <laughs> you know the toilet even so yeah there are kind of um, fears and uh, the system the education s uh, system um, over emphasizes getting a, a good grade in your exams and uh, rather than well rather than um, rather than facilitate you know facilitate your overall mental as well as physical development so yeah uh, that's pretty much all about part one so let's move to part two describe something you don't have now but you'd like to own in the future you should say what this thing is how long you have wanted to own it where your first where you first saw it and explain why you'd like to own it you will have to talk about the topics for one to two minutes you have one minute to think about what you are going to say you can make some notes to help if you wish so yes once you have uh, once you've reached part two the examiner will almost always ask you to um you know not not exactly a ask you to make notes but to uh, recommend that you make some notes in case you uh, hesitate in case you forget what you uh, you um, you want to say or what you think you are about to say so yeah um, let's talk about things I always want to own such as um, let's say let's try something more practical I um I would like to own a larger company, which I can, which I command over. Let, let's not be too greedy. Let's say o over fifty employees. In, well, you know, in Australia, that's um, that can be classified as a quite, quite a um, quite a large enterprise. Um, regardless of your annual turnover so yeah that can <coughs> that gives me a lot of bargaining chips when I when when I on on behalf of my company can you know can can gain some more bargaining chips when we when we negotiate with clients for a larger projects and we can gain some more advantages um, well it's not per se a, a, a larger company but a more um, advanced company with a better system of management better uh, more 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 efficient systems of management systems of workflow which employees can deal with their daily work without hassles and they won't uh, they, they they won't have to endure that uh, you know that kind of bu um, bureaucracy in you know in most large corporations such as um, let's say such as uh, one famous large company in Australia, in Sydney, is, is called Scythe Global, and it is often it often receives criticism on its 
um, systems of uh, workflow, systems of management, or, or 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 to say you know the the way the way those um, senior executives manage their manage or and treat their employees. So yeah. Uh, in summary, I I would like to own. I would like to own a better, a more e more if more efficient, more customized business systems in terms of management, in, in terms of uh, cash flow, in terms of workflow. So let's move on to part three. Um, I'm pretty sure that I have made quite a lot of discussions on owning things in my previous videos. So let's, uh, let's try something different. Let's try this salaries for skilled people. Example questions. The examiner might ask you, do you think television films can make people want to go, what, want to get new, new, new possessions? Why do they have this effect? Are, are there any benefits to society of people wanting to get new possessions? Why do you think this is the case? Do you think people will consider that having lots of lots of possessions is a sign of success in the future? Why or why not? Okay. Say um, you own a fancy car that can make you look very wealthy. So uh, these kind these uh, fancy cars they often uh, they often appear in. Yes, in films, in televisions, in advertising, you know, especially in, uh, in you know, in uh, sorry, not in, but on those ad, ad advertisement often pop, which often pops out while you are you are watching YouTube uh, videos. So that can be quite uh, quite quite annoying, quite uh, irritating. So yeah some yeah there are some type of films that uh that um populates with this kind of media propaganda such as um the film transformers as well as the uh, matrix it uh it often um it often Uh, you know, it, it often shows you lots of uh, games who drive who drive those fancy cars such as you know <laughs> well I, I, I don't know much of, I don't know much about cars but I do think it's a sign of wealth although nowadays you can just you know use your credit card or you know use loans to you know to to buy a car and, and you can pay it off later so yeah still i don't like you know i don't know much about cars but i do agree that um at least partially that own, um, owning new or fancy possessions can can you know can somewhat mean you are wealthy you are rich and uh, it has some negative e negative effects that cause people to overspend you know to 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 spend more than they can manage to earn and um, yeah i have to agree with that i and i have to uh, that that doesn't necessarily mean that i I approve of such customers' behavior, such buyers' behavior, you know, because it's it's such a waste that you spend so much money on just a car, which just, you know, which just is a, which is just kind of a vehicle that can get you where where we want to go, you know. A as long as it works, that should be more than sufficient you know to uh 
you know, to 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 get the job done, you know. My my first car was a second-hand one. It was a Japanese car, man, um, manufactured by Honda. Honda, yes, M- manufactured by Honda. But I but it got it got uh, stolen, and um, it it got stolen a couple of years ago. So uh, then I I ceased to learn how to drive anymore because it's just uh, it's just a nightmare, you know, to learn driving in Australia it's, it's too expensive to, to hire an instructor to teach you how to drive you know and um, and I just hate driving I, I, especially in Sydney I, I just hate it it's my driving sk- my driving skills are like crap so yeah okay um, I think I made this video a little bit too long <laughs> I dragged it too long so uh, I, I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, just to let you know that even if you stutter, you can at least score 6 to 7 in your IELTS speaking test. As you can see here, I have managed to score 6 in speaking test for IELTS. And um, I hope this video can somehow bring you some sort of encouragement. So yes, please feel free to comment, subscribe and share it. And I shall see you on the next IELTS speaking test walkthrough. Peace out.